Daydreaming back in grade school They told me stop daydreaming cause it ain't cool Stop acting like these rappers cause they ain't you I'm on my canvas like an artist with the paint through uh, I was daydreaming back in grade school They told me stop daydreaming cause it ain't cool Stop acting like these rappers cause they ain't you I'm on my canvas like an artist with the paint What's going on, people? Welcome back to episode nine of the What's Going On People podcast. My name is Derek, uh, and I'm here with uh, Mary Wood. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. Uh, you are also you are an actress. You got your film and theater degree at ISU. Can you just uh, tell us a little bit about that uh, and um, how it was at ISU? Sure. So I um, actually did two years at COD, uh, Community College, College of DuPage. And um, I did a couple acting classes just to get my associates out of the way. And then I went to ISU, uh, did some makeup classes and costume classes and obviously acting classes. And right. was a part of um, so many crews. Uh, it's unbelievable how many backstage areas I've been in. Right. So it was it was great. I learned a lot, and uh, a lot of hours came. Uh, and that's basically it. I took a directing class as well. So I learned to dabble not only on screen, but backstage, like I said before, for a director and lighting and sound and all that stuff. So... Awesome. Yeah. And, and you also said you uh, used to work in the nursing program and you used to act as different uh, characters for the patients. And it's kind of uh, similar to what you do now. Can you just tell us a little bit about that as well? Yeah. I love my job at Illinois State. Um, so the nursing program had a simulation hospital and they needed actors. So what's the perfect way? Why not? Right. <laughs> Practice your acting when it's really competitive at ISU as well. So I wasn't really in a lot of like films and shows that were student produced and a lot of theater shows. So why not practice? Right. And get paid? Right. So what I basically did was they handed me a card every day. I went to work. And I was supposed to play a patient with some kind of disease or a symptom going on. And the nurses were trying to figure it out. And then we had some days that I played like an alcoholic and an insane girl for the psych unit. And that was really fun because they had to basically not figure what I had, but also maintain because there was like i said there was a um, simulation hospital running going on so they had to act they had multiple patients and all that stuff so i escaped out of the room several times for mock reasons so yeah it was it was really fun and i'm so i was very it was very bittersweet when I left, so I made so many connections, and I made so many memories with all the two years I worked in there, so. Awesome, and then um, how does that pertain to what you do now? So right now, I work for my uncle, and he is a police chief, and his friend also does CIT, which is Uh, crisis intervention training so what we do is we obviously have mock situations going on with uh, cadets former cadets uh, recruiters and uh, just retired police men and women trying to get back to the force and we're trying to teach them how to slow down and calm be calm in a situation in a high stressful situation. So 
there's one instance I can't reveal anything just because of um, technicality and right. all that stuff. Right. But there are, is a situation where uh, there is a baby mama and an agitator involved with the baby. Right. And right. the police men and women are trying to calm the baby mama down. Otherwise, she takes action and disposes of the baby. Mm. So it, they're very high stressful situations. And whenever I get to participate in that, I always have a thrill. Obviously, those these are very real scenarios. So obviously, I'm not thrilled on like how real they are. Right. But just acting the part, I get a rush. Right. So. And that's a big thing about acting like getting a rush being on stage being in front of people camera that that's how i feel um i just like to make a fool out of myself uh or just like to put a performance on for everybody so i get the thrill of it so um yeah you also said you got an internship for disney world um yeah but but due to covid uh you were sent home so i just wanted to ask you how that made you feel um so, first of all, I could talk about Disney all day long with you. <laughs> uh, I have a Disney bracelet here. It right. does not complete my outfit, but, you know, I like wearing it because it reminds me of the memories I have, and it's kind of my good luck charm, so. Awesome. <laughs> um, but when I got the email that all the college kids were sent home, or being sent home, I was very devastated. I was planning on staying there and obviously getting my master's uh, in marketing and hospitality because as actors, we need not only that. (laughs) So, um, yeah, and I was going to participate in the Disney Aspire program, which helps college students maintain that master's degree or bachelor's or whatever degree you want to go in so um it was it was hard it's still it's still kind of hard to not talk about it just to relive it because I made so many friendships there I had so many great experiences there learned so much there played so many roles and uh, there were a lot of interesting guests, both bad and good, but most of them were good, So, which was great for me, and I got to play a great character and comical, too. Right. Yeah. It's never, it's never easy to go away from something you've been doing so long and just like um, you said, making those connections and stuff. I... When I used to live in Pennsylvania, I used to do something similar to that. I worked for a princess party production uh, company where I dressed as different Disney characters, Star Wars, Power Rangers, Marvel characters, and that. And because of COVID, a lot of the business wasn't coming around, so I didn't really get as many hours. So I had to um, put in my two-week notice because I wasn't making enough money. So I kind of understand how like devastating that felt, you know being in this role with all these characters and making connections and having a great time. And then because of something, you just had to unfortunately step away from it or it wasn't, it wasn't in your control. So it's not 2020 has been an interesting year. Right. I'm going to swear on the podcast, but it's been interesting. It's, so, right. And, um, do you see yourself, uh, having a possibility of returning? Um, that's a hard one because we all, like, as college students, when we got the email, they're like, okay, so once this whole pandemic ends, you guys can definitely reapply and all that stuff. Unfortunately, because uh, we did all get laid off. Right. Um we have to go through the whole interview process all over again, as opposed to um, the internship allowed you, if you wanted to be part-time, just to fill out an application and then 
it's it would be easier if I still had my internship right trying to be part time. So right, so you have to start back from scratch and re interview all over again instead of getting your position you already got. That's really mm -hmm. that's really heartbreaking, and I'm 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 sorry that happened to you. It happened to a lot of people, um, but I'm sorry to happen to you and a whole bunch of other people. I do have other friends that um had to leave their disney jobs because of covid so um it's not just you it's a, a a vast community out there yeah well thank you of course and um to answer your question sorry i went on like this whole no. tangent no that's it. why we're here <laughs> but um once disney starts to be normal right and i like to tell everyone air um, quotes air quotes yeah exactly <laughs> um then it's a possibility it's definitely an idea i definitely want to try to um be an extra in chicago and do all that theater stuff and uh, once entertainment comes back to disney it's definitely more of an option than right now obviously because right. there's only rides and there's not meet and greets, there's right. no fireworks and all that stuff. Um, but I would definitely strive to be obviously a face character. Um, I did audition to be a Disney princess. And unfortunately, I didn't get it. Uh, that's why I wanted to keep that internship going and to basically climb the ladder, as you like to say. So, Right. At least you didn't give up, and I commend that. I commend that because you know a lot of people. A lot of people would have gave up, but you didn't. So, yeah, thank very you. very commendable. You're welcome. Um, let's also uh, transition to you were also a scare actor. Um, oh. I myself was a scare actor. I used to work at a place in Pennsylvania called the Penhurst uh, Insane Asylum, which um, it was this big. It used to be. Uh, uh, a place for the, uh, I want to say, uh, the crazies, and um, it's believed to be haunted, and so uh, you would hear things at night, you would see things move, and I would, uh, I did it for two weeks, um, so did you like doing that, and uh, if you did, why did you like it? What about it did you like it? Okay, uh, first of all, I've heard of Penhurst. <laughs> So, um, it's a, um, it's a, it's a fun place. It's uh it is a fun place. I've researched it because, um, during the spooky times every year, I search up Halloween haunted houses right. and haunted attractions just because it thrills me. Right. So it gives me adrenaline and a lot of people are like, ew, why would you do that? But I'm like, mm, right. there's a little part of my brain that opened up. <laughs> Right. So, um, but I love it. I played, so at Illinois State, we had a haunted bridge, and I played Harley Quinn nice. for the first, first day. And Big I, uh, yeah, it was. And I had so much fun being it. And there were so many reactions. The mayor came and all that stuff. I didn't even know the mayor came because it was so dark. But um, the second day, I was supposed to play a vampire. And they all said, you know, we got great reactions. You should be Harley Quinn again. Yeah. So I love playing. Um, this goes along with saying about acting in general. I love playing different characters and immersing myself in the role, kind of the given circumstances I go through my head. So um, like Michael Myers, I love diving in deep in his brain and like figuring out why he wanted to kill people so right, much. Right, right. And, uh, especially for Halloween, like right. Halloween and demonic just characters in general. So I love doing that and we're a big Halloween uh, family right here so my dad and I carve at least well we carved 
four pumpkins this year because we didn't have our Halloween party. But my dad right. and I usually carve about 20 pumpkins. Nice. The night of our Halloween party. So it's pretty, I love being in, I love the whole Halloween scary right. thing. So. Yeah, my, my favorite uh, Halloween character, because you brought up Michael Myers, uh, my favorite uh, is Freddy Krueger. I just, uh, okay. I just like, I, I dressed up as him, um, like two Halloweens ago, um, and I just like the whole story about it. It's a messed up story because it was, it was true, but um, just the, just the creepiness about it and him uh, entering your dreams and uh, just uh, torturing people. It's just, it's a, it's a great series, and I didn't really like the, uh, the new remake of it. But um, yeah. the, I like the older ones, like the uh, the older Nightmare on Elm Streets. But this, the newer yeah, yeah. one, the newer one, I, it just didn't sit well with me. Yeah. Well, you have to give the directors credit right. and and the writers. I mean, they come up with so many creative aspects to make your hair stand up and make you jump. And I'm gonna um, go out on a limb and say that I love watching scary movies in the dark. Nice. And a lot of people don't like that. I and do too. When I, when I mention that to them, they're like, you are really insane. Why would you do that? And I'm like, I love being scared. That's the whole reason of Halloween. It, and like, it like, it takes out of the scary movie when there's a bright light above you. And I know. like, you just got to be fully in the movie we you know with the darkness even the movie's dark so the dark adds to the darkness it's just, it's just a great effect exactly all your senses have to be re- involved right with watching the movie and focused on one thing because if you have a, a a light or different lights on you know your your focus isn't drawn to just the tv yeah and so since we're on the uh topic of uh spooky stuff um what's your favorite halloween movie uh, just in general, or G- give me just- your give me your top five. I'll make I'll okay. make it easier for you. Okay. Um. Gosh. Um. I like. And they don't have to be. They don't have to be like scary. They can be scary, but they can just be a Halloween movie. Okay. Um. So obviously Halloween. I love, does every movie count for my top five or just the whole f- yeah, Halloween? The, yeah, just put the whole franchise in there. So that's 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 number one. Okay. Um, I really like, um, hmm, this is really hard because there's so many. I know, uh, I'm putting you on the spot oh, here. Yeah. Hocus Pocus is one of them. That's a classic. I really like Hocus Pocus. That's a classic. <laughs> yes. Um, one of my friends told me, I've never seen Hocus Pocus. I'm like, okay, it's July. We're still going to watch it. Right. So we watched it that nice. night. <laughs> so um, I really like... So... Um, the Shining and Doctor Sleep are the two like franchise right. aspects. Right. Uh, I recently watched Doctor Sleep and I really, really liked it. It was good. But, yeah, I, I gotta, yeah, really I, enjoyed. It. I haven't seen that, so I ha- I'll have to see it. Okay, I won't give you any spoilers, awesome. but I I love Stephen King. Yeah. He's a great writer Same. and all that. So he's confusing at times, but. Once you get past the um, many details, he right. goes on. Right. It's a great storyline, and he comes up with creative concepts. So Exactly. Um, another Stephen King. I really like it. Yeah. Uh, I like the newer version more than the older version just because of the clown. Yes. <laughs> and makeup. His makeup is on point. Right. I love scary movies with really good makeup right that i could do at home because i have a makeup kit and it's just so fun to uh recreate it on my time i have right now right so uh and it's something for me to practice right you know 
Uh, that was three, so two more. Um, um, I really like Friday the 13th. I love, oh, love Jason. Yeah. Camp Crystal Lake. Yeah. Um, and my fifth one. So this is an old one, and you might not recognize it because I didn't even recognize it at at first. Right. But it's called Halloween Tree. Hmm. Never heard of it. Yeah. So um, it's a cartoon. Obviously, it's not. Um, it's geared more towards kids. But I grew up every year watching it because my dad loved it. My mom likes it. And it's just great. I always look forward to it. We play it on October 1st. So. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. Um, My top five would probably have to be um, Halloween Town. Okay. Um, I like Halloween Town. It just brings me back to my childhood, and it's just a, it's just a great movie, uh, and like about monsters and witches and all that. So um, that's probably uh, in my top five. Um, I'd also have to say Friday the Thirteenth. Okay. Um, Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, those three. Um, the new one that came out. Um, I like the concept of it, but I didn't like the actors in it. I I feel they could have casted. A little bit more better but um that's just my opinion um i also like sinisters the sinister um those both both one and two really freaked me out um and that's what i liked about them uh just like them because like i haven't really uh i don't really get freaked out easily but that uh movie did it for me uh so that's why i had to put it in my top five and then an old one is jeepers creepers um the the first the first one is my all-time favorite um but the second one's up there too um but the third one that just came out i did not like at all i think they did a really bad they more spoiler alert if you see if you haven't seen it or anybody listening um they more made it to where the car that he drives is the killer and not really him. Oh, so okay. they kind so they kind of ruined it for me because I was because yeah. I was hoping to see, you know, um like from the first and second one where like he was doing the the eating and the um the chasing people. So, uh those would be my top 5. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Awesome. Um and then what's uh your favorite Halloween candy? Uh, um, I gotta say Kit Kat. Nice. That's a good um, choice. When I was at Disney, my name, well, at Illinois State, too, because there were two Marys in the program, all of Freddie <laughs> at COD. Right. So I didn't want to be called Mary W. Right. So I went by my middle name, which is Catherine, but there was already a Catherine at Illinois State, so I went by Kat. Nice. And... They called me Cat throughout Disney. I was named um, Skipper Cat for my um, role at the Jungle on the Jungle Cruise, nice. and I've always loved chocolate right. and Kit Kats. Right. But I am allergic to cats, oh, so nice. that's a fun fact. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but like, is it? Um... Do you have allergic reaction? Do you like get? Do you swell up? Do you get itchy? What What about cats? You're allergic about? Like what about it? Are you allergic? So when I, uh, like when a cat is in my room, I was babysitting one night, and the parents didn't tell me they had two cats, so um, my throat started itching, right. not like closing up. But it was just very uncomfortable, right. and my eyes start watering, and all that. It's just an uncomfy situation. Right. It's not so, too severe where I need like an EpiPen. Like right. one person asked me, right. "Do you carry around an EpiPen?" I'm like, "No, <laughs> no, it's no, not no. Like, no." But it's very uncomfortable, and 
there are some times where I'm like, I'm not a cat person. I'm a dog person. I have a dog. Right. She's actually hiding in my room right now because of the storm. But right. um, I like that aspect of having a black cat. Right. Just, you know, there. Yeah. Because, like, the, yeah. The, the spookiness of it. <laughs> and the and the tradition it brings, you know. Yeah, true. Yeah. Just like uh, going back to one of your favorite movies, Hocus Pocus, how the kid got turned into a black cat. Zachary Banks. Yeah, uh, there you go. They're coming out with a Hocus Pocus too. I know. With in it, I don't. I'm excited. I'm very excited, but I don't know how that concept is going to come out right. because. He literally turned into stone right. and evaporated. Right. But who knows? It's, it's Halloween. Anything right. can happen. I like how they brought the, the same characters um, back I to I did, that. too. And mm-hmm. um, where I work now, I work at The Forge um, in Lamont. Um, okay. And we do these um, movies in the park. And one of the first movies in Halloween we showed was Hocus Pocus. So, um <laughs> We uh, we also showed Jurassic Park. We showed um, what's that? What's that? That new Disney movie that just came? Not Disney movie. Uh, the movie that just came out. It's like called Loco. It's uh, with uh, Channing Tatum. Yeah. And he's like he, he, Book of Life. No, no. It's like a cartoon. He's like a he's like a skeleton um, mariachi player. Oh, and um, he, and he oh fa- my gosh. falls in love Coco. with Coco. There we go. That's what it is. <laughs> I knew. I, I knew. Wait, you knew it's it. on the tip of my tongue. Right. I said loco, so I was. I was close. It. Yeah, you were really close, though. So. Right. Um. Hmm. So, um, just to wrap up, um, do you? I know you said you wanted to talk about, um, like extra work. Did you have any, um? questions you wanted to ask or like anything you would want to know you uh, I know you said you wanted to talk a little bit about this on the on the show yeah so um I've I've done obviously my research and uh extra work and finding an agent obviously right now because of the thing we call a pandemic right <laughs> um everything is shut down or on hold for a while. So um, I'm wondering how you got involved in your extra work, how you sought it, sought it out. And did you do any website reading research, I mean? Right. Yeah. Um, so there's a uh, Chicago um, theater auditions website that I believe I shared with you. Um, they all, they have, uh, they've been doing a lot of, uh, Zoom calls, uh, auditions and, um, aud- uh, auditions in that aspect, um, for a theater group. I know they did some Shakespeare plays, um, this past, uh, they were casting, they were trying to look for some, uh, people to do one of their Shakespeare plays. And they also have things on there for commercials, um, and just, uh, modeling stuff. I don't know if you're into that, but they also have that. And they also model at College of DuPage every right. Friday. Awesome. So very I dabble in the work to modeling. Awesome. And they also have um there's this uh website it's called auditionsfree.com and you can search by like city of different um auditions in that area. Um and that's where you can get that's where you can see a lot of uh Casting calls for auditions for Chicago Fire, Chicago PD, Chicago Med. Um, I did recently just try to apply for Chicago Med. Uh, I didn't really, I didn't get an email back for that, but um, I did apply for that. Um, And also there are, like on the um, Chicago Actors Connect, I know a lot of um, people post on there about extras. So just like really networking and doing your research um just constantly uh researching i remember back in pennsylvania i was looking up different um theater auditions and um 
one popped up that was the initials of my name. And um, my initials are DCP, and the theater was called DCP Theater. So I was like, this is kind of fate, so I got to, you know, see what kind of auditions they're doing. And they were doing auditions for Alice in Wonderland, and I got I got the part of the Mad Hatter. So it all... As soon as you said Alice in Wonderland, yeah. like, I don't know why, but I'm like, you got the Mad Hatter. I did, yeah. Oh my gosh, how was that? It was really fun, Um, and it was like a an ad, it was like a... What is it called? Um, adaptive script. It wasn't like the original script. They had like somebody else wrote a new version of it and they got the rights to that. So um, like the song was a little bit changed. Um, but uh, I've always liked the Mad Hatter and um, seeing uh, Johnny Depp do it may oh. like, you know, Fill, filled me up with joy and then when I saw that I was like I'm perfect for that so I went in like with crazy hair uh, I wore my suspenders I, I went I went all out and uh, I I got uh, casted for it and um, I had a gigantic hat that I had to balance on my head the uh, costume designer she like made it of 20 she stitched 20 hats together and I had this like three foot tall hat on my head that I had to like use the strength of my head to balance the whole play. And eventually we put a strap attached to it. So it like was a whole helmet, but I still was heavy. And, um, that was probably, that was probably the funnest part trying to like do my lines in front of everyone and like concentrate on balancing, balancing a big hat on my head. Oh my gosh, I could totally imagine it. Oh my gosh. And I had, and I, I was like a, I was the, my theme was like kind of like um, 70s groovy. So I like looked like I was in the 70s. Uh, like a, a, I looked like I was a Mad Hatter in the 70s. It was really fun. Yes. Oh my gosh. I love playing those roles. Um, like the main roles are cool, obviously, but those creative funky roles i played obviously an insane girl right. that was a support to su the supporting actor right. so i love playing it even though i didn't have that many lines just getting into the feels of it right. and getting into that persona of act crazy so exactly and just uh the seeing the the different take that the director has, you know, you know, d directors are uh, different no matter who you work with. You know, they some can be the same, but a lot tend to be different. So it was just um, great seeing their aspect on how they wanted to bring the play out to the audience. Mm -hmm. When I was um, I did a study abroad in England and Edinburgh or not in Edinburgh, but I traveled to Edinburgh with my mom. When I did um, my study abroad in London, there were so many Shakespeare takes of different aspects. Like um, there was uh, Midsummer Night's Dream, yeah. and that had a twist to it, but not like a complete twist. And then um, I'm blanking, but the one with the wives. They had their, oh, no, not the wife, sorry. The um, Taming of the Shrew had the gender swap. Right. So that was interesting in that take. So I like the different, like you said, different takes on different perspectives of the director's feel and concept. So Right. And um, when I, I, I used to, when I went to college um, down in North Carolina, um, I was in a play, a Shakespeare play, Much Ado About Nothing, and um, I was the sexton, and the like the the, the town's uh, word keeper, and um, one, my director. One of the roles that was um, written as a guy role, he made it into a woman role. So, uh, like, I can see where, like, how you said, like the the gender swap, which was a 
it was a really cool um, adaptation that uh, he did, and um, not many people expected it. So um, that's pro- that's why I think probably why he went chose that direction. Yeah, there's a lot of talk when a big portion of a film or show that you know and you've memorized is switched up. So right. the director loves when audiences talk about that, and I just love that those conversations at the end of shows right and that and that gives um the show like more publicity because people want to come out and see wow they changed this part i want to i wonder how it's going to be like you know i saw um this play this certain way so now i want to see this way so like it gets more publicity like that when Mm -hmm. when you when you differ uh differentiate it yeah um but um just some advice that I would give to you is uh, just um, keep going uh, and uh, do do your research. Um, and if like not all the time is everything going to be paid and uh, I know it sucks, um, but like do a couple um, student films, um, do like a do one volunteer role, um, just to like, um, make some more connections. And, uh, you could, that's also another way of getting your foot in the door because you might've, um, done this not paid, but then who you met on that, um, set and the, uh, actors you also acted with, they might know of another one that is paid. So it's just like, um, always be on the lookout, always be, um, hungry for it, um, in this profession, um, you gotta, you gotta want it, and, um, yeah, so that's, it's my advice for you. Okay, well, thank you.